Hi everyone. Welcome to random forest session. So the learning objectives of our today's uh, random forest session is to understand the concept of ensemble modeling, understand the concept of bagging, then we will see what is random forest algorithm, out of bag error rate, how we find optimal number of trees to be created in the random forest and how to find optimal number of variables to be selected for the random forest tree. These are the learning objectives. Let me start off with some concepts. The first and foremost concept is ensemble modeling. The kind of problem statements that we have been trying to solve are most of the problem statements that we have been trying to solve are like dichotomous target variable. Supervised learning technique where the target is a dichotomous target. For example, we are trying to build a model to find customers who are going to respond or those who are not going to respond. If you are trying to build a model for churn, we are trying to find customers who are going to churn. For example, uh, in a telecom client, we are trying to find customers who are going to churn from the telecom service or who are not going to churn. If the customers are, uh, if they are not customers, they are employees in HR. The problem statement would be employees who are likely to attract or employees who are not going to attract. That is basically, can we predict employees who are going to put down their resignation or those who are likely to keep continuing. If we are trying to build a model, which is for a banking kind of a segment where we are trying to extend a loan, the target segment becomes customers who are likely to default and customers who are not going to default. So these are the kind of problem statements that we are trying to uh, analyze and build models for. Now for this kind of statements, problem statements, there are many techniques available. We learned classification tree. In classification tree itself, there are three algorithms. Then there are other techniques like logistic regression. In logistic regression also, we are trying to solve a 1-0 problem. Other techniques are like K nearest neighbor, naive Bayesian, discriminant analysis, some of the advanced machine learning techniques like random forest, which we are going to learn today, neural network, support vector machine, gradient boosting machine. So these are many techniques. So there are eight to nine techniques. Earlier, we used to build one model or we used to try two models, compare them, compare the output and see the model which is better and take that model and implement it. Now the approach is slightly changed. Now the new approach is for the given problem statement, let us take five or six techniques. For example, I want to build a employee churn model. I'll build an employee churn model using a card technique. I'll build a model using a logistic regression technique. I'll build a model using a random forest technique. I'll build a model using a neural network technique and say support vector machine. These are the five techniques I select. Now these five techniques, if I am trying to solve a problem of classification, that is whether the customer is going to be one or zero, all these techniques can be used to classify. So these five techniques I used, I built model and the five techniques for each record, they will give their own output saying whether the customer will be a one or a zero. Assume for a given record of the five techniques, three techniques predict customer is going to be one and two techniques predict the customer is going to be zero. The majority of the techniques are saying the customer is going to be one as such based upon majority rule, 
we will say the final predicted class of the customer will be one in case we are using the models to predict probability each of the techniques will give you probability so there will be five probabilities available say 0 0.1 0 0.18 0 0.2 0 0.23 0 0.35 the final predicted probability in that case will be average of these five probabilities so can you see that you are assembling your ensembling you are aggregating the output of the five models and based on the output of five models you are taking a final call and this is called ensemble modeling in a ensemble modeling multiple learning algorithms are built to obtain a better predictive performance are you getting the point yeah so this is the concept and this is increasingly this concept is being used in industry where statisticians analysts build multiple models for the same problem statement and then based upon majority principle if you are predicting a class or based upon averaging principle if you are predicting probability the final output is decided and the final output is a function of all the five models clear the first concept now let's understand the second concept bootstrap aggregation let's understand the first the term bootstrap assume you have a small data set assume you have a data set of only 10 records uh, 10 data points assume you have got say uh, age and age of only 10 randomly picked students from a school and those students can be from first standard fifth standard third standard so all students from say due, uh, primary section and 10 ages are there you can compute the age average of these 10 if you take a random sample from this 10 records say you pick five records will the average be close to the average of the 10 records 10 data points obviously no because there are small bias because of the small number of data points will occur okay if assume you are taking instead of taking five data points randomly you take 10 data points randomly but these 10 data points are taken with replacement if you are not doing with replacement all the 10 will get selected now you assume you are doing with replacement which means a given age can be selected multiple times will the average of this 10 data points be same as the uh, data from which you have sampled it again no because problem of small number of data points however if you take a sample of 10 data points selected randomly with replacement and you compute an average then you take another sample from the original data set again with replacement you compute average and you keep doing this process say 100 times large the objective is to say large number of times and 100 is a large number any number about 30 is a large number so if you do it this experiment many number of times you take 10 samples with replacement and compute the average now if you compute average of these averages the average of these averages will be close to the average of the population from which you have been deriving samples with replacement it is tested out okay these concepts when people put forward they are tested out this process of taking samples with replacement multiple number of times is called bootstrapping sampling with replacement and you take these samples multiple number of times it's called 
bootstrapping and this bootstrapping process is typically done when you have data which is a small data set are you getting the point see many times when you have to do modeling you you will end up with small data points one example i can give is one of my projects was building a scorecard home loan application scorecard when application scorecard basically a scorecard to assess the riskiness of a customer at that time the customer applies for loan and we had historical data but the historical data itself was too small we had less than 5000 observations okay and default in home loan is very small because of that data was too small to build the model what we had to do is we had to take samples with replacement create a development sample which was done by replacement create a validation sample sample with replacement hold out sample create a sample with replacement okay so we are doing bootstrapping these are practical examples so when you have small data points and you have to still work with the small set of data in those cases bootstrapping is a process okay first point here bootstrapping is sampling with replacement and when you do this exercise multiple number of times in random forest when the model is built we'll see the detailed algorithm but at this point high level i want to say in a random forest when a model is built you pass a data set development sample on which model has to be built internally the algorithm creates many samples with replacement so it does a bootstrapping of data point clear first point then cart model is built on all of these samples with replacement okay detail algorithm i'll explain so now assume you have passed a development sample and you said i want 50 samples with replacement be created in the background so the algorithm will create 50 samples with replacement and on all each of these samples a cart model will be built a cart model gives you a probability or a class so cart model for each record it will give you a probability of that record and it will also give a class of that record now if i take probability then i have 50 models and 50 probabilities for each record is available now can i take average of it right so i am aggregating in a random forest the first step is bootstrapping second step is on all the bootstrap samples model is built and the predicted score is aggregated that's why the term aggregation bootstrap aggregation is abbreviated as bagging random forest is also called a bagging technique random forest is also called a bagging technique because it does bootstrapping of the data and on each data the model is built the output of the models is aggregated to get the final output score or class for each record that's why bootstrap aggregation bootstrap bagging okay these are the two important concepts that we have to understand so for you both of these terms you should do more of google search internet search on these concepts so that your conceptual clarity becomes more clear you'll you'll have to see more documents to read through it but I, at the gist of it i have explained yeah let's now understand random forest we started with of with ensemble definition ensemble is multiple model being built and output of the models is aggregated if you are trying to predict the class you do voting majority if you are trying to predict the probability you do averaging in random forest technique internally itself many models are built and the final output of the many models is a voting that is majority if you are predicting a class and if you are predicting the probability the final output is 
average of all the probabilities. As such, random forest technique by itself is an ensemble model. Random forest by itself is an ensemble model. So, yeah, random okay. forest is an ensemble by itself. It involves construction, constructing multitude of decision trees at a training time. The prediction is based on mode for classification. That is, if we are trying to predict class 1 or 0, then you have to do voting. Mode means maximum number of uh, models are saying what. They are saying 1, then output will be 1. If maximum number of models are saying 0 for a given record, the predicted class will be 0. And mean for regression tree. One of the benefit of random forest technique is it helps reduce overfitting because there are multitude of models which are being built and the final output is an average of those many models in the background. Averaging tends to cancel out the variance. Averaging tends to cancel out the variance, dispersion. Okay. Because if something is too extreme on one side and there would be certain models too extreme on the other side, averaging will nullify their effect. So a random forest technique is supposedly good at overcoming the overfitting problem. However, if you do extreme overfitting, which means you intentionally build a model with extreme extreme overfitting, then even a random forest model will not be able to overcome that problem. And I'll showcase you that this problem will exist if I do extreme overfitting. Okay? Now, let us understand the algorithm. Can you, can you give an example of extreme overfitting? Quickly, just to recall. My I set the min bucket too small, three cases, five cases. If I set that kind oh, of okay. uh, min bucket, random forest will overfit. Okay, okay, I understand now. Yeah. Got it. Yeah, yeah, got it. Okay. So let us try to understand the algorithm. There are three steps in the algorithm. First step. This is the data. I got my independent variables. And this is my target variable. I labeled it as class. Any issues here? And I have got n number of rows. I do sampling with replacement. So assume there are 10,000 records. I create a sample D1. D1 will have 10,000 records. But because I am doing sampling with replacement, Obviously, all records from the parent data set will not be part of D1. Agreed? Right? Certain records will come multiple times. Two, three or more than three also. Possible. Right? Agreed? So, this becomes my sample D1. Likewise, I can create sample D2. I can create sample D N. N is a input that we have to pass to the modeling technique. Okay. S sampling with replacement clear. Yeah. Second is it will take a first sample. Now be very uh, attentive here. It will take the first sample. In that sample, there are many variables. Say there are 100 variables, attributes, independent variables, 100. And I have to give a parameter again, how many variables to consider. Say I say a parameter 10. What the 10 means? Here, when this base is there, all 100 variables are available. But when I say 10 out of 100, only 10 of the variables will be considered. Rest of the variables are available, 
but only 10 will be considered how does a cart model built how is a cart model built in a cart model you start with a root node all variables is evaluated against target for the genie gain the variable which gives you the best genie gain is used for splitting cart logic similarly in random forest at a root node there are hundred variables but i have said 10 consider 10 out of 100 from that 100 randomly 10 variables will be marked selected and only those 10 will be considered for genie gain calculation okay of those 10 whichever is the best variable that variable will be considered for splitting I get so how are we how yeah carry on yeah how are we uh, selecting those 10 out of the hundreds that so how are out we, of 100 so will be randomly selected randomly selected that yeah. I understand but in card technique but in card technique, we were not sure uh, by which variable we are going to split. But it does the it does the, the algorithm runs for all the variables. Then we see the result and then decide that this is the right uh, yes. node to uh, Yes. For here, here again in the variable selection, there is a randomness that has been introduced. And that's the reason why random word in the random forest. Just for the time being, go with the flow. Okay? Okay. So, I have to pass a parameter, this m, which is m is the total number of, capital M is the total number of variables, independent variables, and that we said is 100. And small m is, I am saying, randomly out of those 100, 10 has to be considered. And in the first level, at the root node, random 10 out of the 100 are considered, evaluated for Gini gain, and the best variable selected, and of the 10, the best out of the 10 is selected and you get split okay I get two child nodes I get two child nodes now if this child node again a random 10 out of the hundred will be selected and those random 10 will be evaluated for Gini gain and the best variable out of those random 10 will be considered and the split happen similarly on this node random 10 variables will be selected the best variable with GD gain at this level will be considered and this node will be split based upon that and this process keeps happening and this model is built for the first sample D1 then you will have a second sample d2 same process will happen random 10 variables at the root node will be considered a best variable will be selected and then you get two child node again at the child node random 10 and please note the random 10 which is selected at the first level here A5, A1, A5, A7, it is not necessary the same A1, A5, A7 should be selected here. That random 10 selected at the child can be different than the random 10 selected in the previous level. It is also possible certain variables may be same because it is all random. Okay? So this process will happen for all your N samples and with this process N models will be built okay third step based upon the n samples n trees are built each record is classified based on the n tree and final class of each record is based on voting and in case we want probability final probability of each class each record is based upon average now there are two challenges how do I select this M this M 
for explanation of algorithm I said 10 but I need to find out what is this M how what should be because if there is 100 independent variables how do I say 10 is right why not 15 why not 90 why not 100 itself okay that is the first question second question is how many what should be the value of n in the background I said there are multitude of trees which are going to create that multitude of trees should be 50 or it should be 500 that is another problem these are something which we have to find out what is optimal for our data we'll see that okay before I move forward there is one more thing in this random forest technique you do not have a pruning step you do not have a pruning step in a random forest algorithm the reason why you do not have a pruning step because the cart model that you are building in the cart model the variable selection at each level the the variables variable set at each level that is being evaluated itself is random okay and in the background you have multitude of trees not one tree okay as such you cannot compute a CP for multitude of trees there, there will be one tree which will give as in cart we saw one tree will give a CP of 0 0.0202 another tree will say CP is 0 0.0182 third will say CP is 0 0.0256 which CP we will take okay as such the pruning element is not there in a random forest okay now there are two important further things <coughs> the entire objective of random forest is to build a model which helps you make good predictions that is your error classification error should be low now this classification error in random forest is a function of two elements one is how good your trees are how good your independent trees are in the whole random forest you have 50 trees assume how good is each tree out of the 50 all the 50 trees should be very good in that case you will have a good prediction and second is because random forest tends to do averaging and by averaging it tends to overcome the problem of overfitting what it means is the 50 trees that you are making 50 or 500 trees whatever you are making in the background those trees should not be correlated if what is correlation if there is a positive correlation one value increases the correlated value also increases right our objective is by averaging it has to cancel out the extreme values overcome overfitting but if they are correlated which means all the trees are correlated in that case all the trees will be predicting in same direction for a given record which means averaging is not going to cancel out right so the second problem is my trees should not be correlated to have a good prediction in a random forest each tree in the random forest should be a good predictor by itself second is the trees should not be correlated with each other these are the two important criteria a random forest models should satisfy come back to our slide okay let me read these statements some original papers on random forest proved that 
random forest error rate that is accuracy of predictions depends on two factors first is the correlation between any two trees in the forest increasing the correlation increases the forest error rate now let us understand this correlation concept okay m capital m 100 okay i want n that is number of trees this is hash number of independent variables okay this is hash number of trees to be built okay in a n is say uh, 50 number of trees to be built is 50 now let's say hash uh, number of variables to be considered and that is say m small m and that is say uh, 97 okay I am saying that at any given level 97 variables should be selected for evaluation let us say this hundred variables which are there in this hundred variables say hash weak variables 70 okay hash moderate variables say 25 and hash strong variable is 5 okay and of this 5 best variable is x y z x y z is the best variable now I want to build 550 trees my first tree my first tree starts this is my root node of hundred variables 97 has to be considered so randomly 97 variables of the hundred will be selected what is the probability that XYZ what is the probability that XYZ gets selected No, because 97 variables you are considering out of 100 what is the probability that XYZ will be considered in that random 97 variables being selected the probability is 97 percentage okay if the probability is 97 percentage now Gini gain is evaluated for the 97 three variables will not be considered for Gini gain is evaluated which will be the variable by which this split is going to happen by which variable this split is going to happen the variable which has the best gene gain and the best gene gain i have said is the best variable by gene gain is xyz which means yeah. most likely the split will happen by xyz only if i am have building 50 such models in that 50 models out of the 50 models how many models will have XYZ variable coming as the first splitting variable almost all mathematically and probability wise probability wise this number would be because I am building 50 models the probability wise this number would be 
out of 50 models 49 models 48 or 49 models will have XYZ as the for the time being I am considering extreme scenarios basically whenever you have to understand the concept sometimes take extreme scenario assume the models that you are building is only a one level model assume the model you are building is only one level model now if you are building 50 models is 49 models going to be the same because 49 models will have x y z as the variable which by which it will be split it will be same or similar it will be very much similar because x y z is the only variable virtually it will be same uh, child node size will be slightly different but virtually it is similar very much which means all these 49 out of the 50 are correlated to each other which means any given record which is now being evaluated by these 49 out of the 50 they will have the same prediction more or less the same prediction by all of them same then why you want 49 different cart models why you want 49 cart models which are all same there is no point having 49 cart models which are all virtually the same yeah yes yes so in that case what I'm trying to say is if the variable small m is selected too high which is as close to capital M what you're ending up is all the cart models that you're going to get the structure of all the cart models is virtually going to be the same almost the same which means they are going to be highly correlated in that case not there is no point having all of the models it's virtually saying okay I build one cart model only because correlated if they are correlated no point point clear yeah now let us see the second point Okay, now let us see the second point. I started. The strength of each individual tree in the forest. What again we are relating this with random some original papers on random forest to that random forest error rate depends on two factors. First is correlation. We have understood it. How the trees can be correlated second is the strength of each individual tree in the forest a tree with a low error rate is a strong classifier obviously if you have low classification error that is a good model right because you are predicting things better now when do you get a weak model let us understand how do you get a weak model okay The scenario which I gave was, again I will reiterate, M is 100, N is 50 trees we are building and M is 97. Now instead of M 97, I will say M is 3. Number of variables to be evaluated is just 3. Okay? We know how many weak variables are there. 70. How many moderate variables are there? How many strong variables are there? 5. I am randomly selecting first variable. First variable selected. What is the probability that a strong variable is not selected? What is the probability that a strong variable is not selected when the first variable is drawn? No. 
For only we are just taking the first variable. What is the probability when I'm of the 100, I'm picking out one of the variable. What is the probability a strong variable is not selected? There are five strong variables. Probability of selecting a strong variable is 5 divided by 100. So probability of a strong variable not getting selected is 1 minus 5 percentage that is 0.95. Agreed? So a probability of a strong variable not getting selected is 0.95. Right? After the first variable is selected and it is on probability probability strong variable not selected. This is what the probability we are having. Okay? Second variable selected. What is the probability that a strong variable is not selected? Virtually it is 0.95 only. Technically, if in this case, a right calculation would be, if in the first draw, a strong variable is not selected, then in the second draw, the probability of a strong variable getting selected will be 5 by 99. 5 by 99 because now number of variables have gone reduced. So the chance is equal to 5 divided by 99. Okay, this is virtually same 0 0.05. So the probability of a strong variable not getting selected is this case is again virtually the same. A third variable is selected and again what is the probability of a strong variable not getting a probability of a strong variable getting selected is 5 divided by 98 so, and probability of a strong variable not getting selected is 1 minus this so virtually it is same 0.95 okay so probability of a strong variable not getting selected in all the three variables being considered is all three attempts will be in the first it was not got selected in second it did not get selected and in third it got not 85 0.85 what it means is if you set this m too small 85 percentage of the time when you have assume a one level model 85 percentage of the time a strong variable will not be here for splitting and the model will end up splitting based upon a weak variable or a moderate variable I'm the entire discussion is to uh, come to that point what is the M to be considered but do you agree that if you select too small or M in that case many of the models that is 85 percentage of your models will be weak models if out of 100 models 85 models are giving a wrong classification or a weak prediction and 15 percentage of the models are giving a good prediction averaging when you do averaging the weak models will outweigh the strong models as a result the overall output will be weak output do you agree so the challenge is m has to be optimal we saw if you keep m as too high you get correlated models having many models which are same does not make sense if you have m as too small you end up having weak models and having many models which are weak again don't make sense the problem is I set too high a M I get good models but all the models end up being correlated if I set M too small I get weak model 
but they are not correlated i don't want correlated that condition is satisfied but all the many of the models are weak somewhere i need to have a optimum please understand the usage of the term optimum optimum term is used when you are trying to balance things between at least between two parameters optimum word is used when you are trying to balance when you are trying to find a balance between at least two parameters okay so there is a one side correlation of the model on other side i have got a strength of the model and i want my models to not be highly correlated i don't want my models to be extremely weak so the optimal m is not at 97 because it is too correlated the optimal m is not at 3 because they are too weak so the optimal m will be somewhere between this range what is that optimal we have to find yeah so let us go back to the uh, the original papers thing one minute so let us see this final statement increasing the strength of the individual trees decreases the error rate so strength of the model is important correlation between the model has to be avoided reducing m reduces correlation at the same time reduces strength increasing m increases correlation increases strength of the model also somewhere in between is a optimal range of m and that optimal range is usually quite wide whatever is that range and whatever is the value of m is what we have to find out but is this logically understood we'll see all the steps how to get that by coding and all those things yeah these are the three steps let me again explain uh, the three steps Step one, the sample that on which you are building a random forest model is split into n samples. n is the input you will have to give. 50 trees, 500 trees, 5000 trees. Again, it's an input. That sample is split into n samples with replacement. Step one. Step two, on all of these samples, cart model is built. When the cart model is built, at each level, at each level, a fraction of total independent variables is considered for Gini gain. Not all variables are considered. And that fraction, what, how many variables to consider is again an input that you provide. Right? And based upon that input, the tree is built. Third step, n samples and trees are built. Each record is classified or for each record probability is computed based on all the entries. If you are predicting the class, then based upon voting principle, that is what is maximum number of models are saying one or if maximum are saying one, then the output will be one. If maximum number of models in the background are saying zero, then the output will be zero. And if you are predicting probability, then average of the probabilities of all the trees output is the average for that record we do not have a pruning step and one of the challenge is how do we ensure that our model accuracy is high or model error rate is low to ensure model accuracy is high there is two important factors one our model should not be all the trees in the background should not be highly correlated and the tree should be strong but now if to have strong trees you require high value of m but the moment you make high value of m they also become correlated to avoid correlation you require low value of m but if you go on the lower side trees become weak so somewhere in between there is a optimal 
this is what we have discussed so far yeah now let us go ahead and try building the random forest model using R whatever we have learned will first execute certain codes yeah okay so let's see the random forest uh, as usual uh, the first step I'm going to set my working directory after having set the working directory I'll import my uh, development sample uh, we are again using the same development sample that we have used for our cart technique our logistic integration uh, this again what you can see you can build a model using a cart technique you can build the model using a logistic regression technique you can build a model using a random forest technique you can compare the model performance of each of the techniques and then you can build a ensemble model saying that I already have a cart model I have a logistic model I've got a random forest model output I'll take for each record the output of these three models and then do averaging if you want to com compute the probability or do voting if you want to find a final class that will become an ensemble model exercise for you okay so uh, let me import the holdout sample also as we know our development sample has got 14,000 observations and holdout has got 6,000 that is the same data that I'm continuing to use package random forest is what we have to use there are certain up up upgrades and bug fixes in the updated version of random forest one of the key important thing which is there is random forest that we saw I, which we I explained is sampling with replacement okay in the updated version of random forest there is a provision that you need not do sampling with replacement if your data is big enough in that case you can say I don't want to go with sampling with replacement approach I want to take for each samples simple random random sampling which means you will have to pass a percentage of data to be considered okay so you may say a parameter say 0.7 in that case from the population 70 percentage of data will be randomly selected and a sample one will be created from the same population again a 70 percent randomly selected data will be created and become sample two again from sample population random 70 percent will be selected and will become sample three and so forth you will have 50 500 whatever number of sam uh, number of trees you want to build that many samples will get created so this is in the new version of random forest algorithm and it makes sense when you have big data set okay so in terms of small data set go with the bootstrapping because when you have got small data set you can do not have the luxury of going with the simple random sampling okay just a question mark random function as always if you want to get a help always run the question mark and the function name I'll just show you a brief documentation see this one SAM size if you see this statement okay if replace n row else ceiling so what this sample size is saying that if I say replace equal to false by default replace is true by default replace is set with true what it means is by default it is saying sampling with replacement but if I want to overwrite it override it and then I say sample equal to false I override the replace parameter but I do not pass what proportion of data should be considered for sampling with replacement if I don't pass that parameter then it is going to consider 0.632 is going to consider 63.2 percentage now why 0.632 any idea 
okay so let us understand why before I go into this execution uh, say that I, we have got a data which has got ID column independent variable 1 independent variable 2 and so forth these are your variables certain and then there is a target okay and assume 1 2 3 4 there are 100 observations in it I am doing sampling with replacement and I am creating a sample with replacement sample size is 100 only sample size is 100 only okay when I'm doing sampling with replacement and sample size from the population sample size is same as population size it does not mean all records will be selected because I'm doing sampling with replacement agreed what is the probability that a given record will be selected 1 divided by 100 probability P will be 1 divided by 100 what is the probability that the given record will not be selected if I draw one record out of it I'm just making one draw what is the probability a given record will not be selected yeah no one minus point zero one so the probability will be one minus probability of selection this is a probability if I do only one draw probability of a given record not getting selected if I do one draw what is the probability of the record same record not getting selected if I do true draws and it is with replacement with replacement in that case when you're doing with replacement each time population remains 100 only population is not going down so each time probability of selected being selected is 0 0.01 and probability of not getting selected is 0 0.99 and probability of not getting selected in both the draws probability of not getting selected in both the draws will be 0 0.99 power 2 See, probability of not getting selected in the first draw was 0.99. These are mutually exclusive events. Probability of not getting selected in second draw also is again 0.99. Probability of not getting selected in both of them is 0.99 multiply 0.99. Probability of not getting selected in third draw also in all the three draws it will be 0.99 cube what is the probability that it is not going to be selected I try hundred times and hundred times I tried but a given record is not selected in all the hundred attempts 0.99 raised to hundred okay this is 0.36 which means this is the probability of not getting selected in all the 100 draws probability of getting selected at least once in 100 draws is equal to 1 minus this probability of getting selected at least once in 100 draws is 1 minus 0 0.366 
this is 0 0.633, 0 0.632. Okay, it, this has been experimentally found that from a given population, if you do a sampling with replacement, in a given population, if you do sampling with replacement, and you create a sample which is the same size as the population, probability that a given record will be part of the sample is 63.2 percentage. And the probability that it is not part of the sample will be 1 minus 63.2 percentage. And this mathematically I have proven. Are you getting? Yeah? If you still don't agree, let's see by simulation. I am now going to simulate 100 numbers randomly, right? Random generator. To generate random numbers, there is a function called rand between equal to rand between. I am saying generate numbers between 1 to 100. How many numbers I have to generate? 100. I will do copy paste special. So I will paste it as values. So because if I otherwise these numbers will keep changing. Okay, now I made it as constant. All these records which have been randomly generated corresponding records. One is there, one is there. 79 is there, 79 is there. I will pull, pull out those records and that will become my sample. Agreed? Let us see how many of identifiers. These are your identifiers. These are identifier. How many of these identifier records are selected? Some will be selected one time, some will be selected two times and so. Insert pivot table. Okay. This is random numbers and let us see. Okay. So again let us copy paste. Oh, wait. First is sum. Sum has to be count, not sum. Count. Okay. So again let us do copy paste. values. This is a random generator and this is count. Let me do sorting of this. Data sort. Sort by count. Smallest to. So what it's saying is this record, record number 7 is selected one time, 8 is selected one time, so certain records are selected one time. Some records are selected multiple times also. Right? So some of them are selected multiple times. Some of them are selected three times also. Possible. Right? How many records have got a place in this sample? 98 has got a place. 95 is there. 96, 97, 9900 is not present. So similarly, there are certain other records which are not present. How many of them have not found a place? It shows you 66 records, which means remaining 34 are not part of this data set. That's what we said. Approximately 32 percentage will not be there. There will always be a sampling error. So it shows 34 percentage. Are you getting the point? So when you do a sampling with replacement, approximately 66, 67, 68 percentage of records will be part of the sample. Some will be at least one, some will be twice, some will be three times, some will be more than three times. And there will be a remaining 32, 33, 34 percentage of records which will be not part of the sample. Clear? So that is what so if you do not specify the sample size, that is if you do not pass yourself this parameter, then it will consider it as 0.632 provided you have set this as false. Yeah? Understood? And many other parameters are there, importance and all those things. We will see some of these parameters at depth. 
<coughs> yeah. Okay. So we saw the function and these are various parameters. Now let us go ahead and execute. Before I execute, let me quickly show the data view or which data we are going to use rfdf.dev. On this data, uh, this is the same data set. If you recollect, we have got the same custom ID, target, age, gender, balance, occupation, the same data set we are using for our model development. Okay. So let me move forward. Now I'll see the function call certain important parameters. I am building a model target as a function of all the variables. You recollect it's a cart model in the background. It's a cart model. Okay. Data is equal to this is my input data set minus one is basically to remove the cast ID column entry. I do not know how many trees have to be built in the background. What is optimal? I don't know. So I am setting entry as reasonably high value to begin with. So what I'm saying entry equal to 500. I'm saying build 500 cart models in the background. I'm starting with M try equal to three. Now the first now here, what is what should be your starting point for M? I said that M should not be too high. M should not be too low. The thumb rule is square root of in number of independent variables. So if you have got 100 independent variables, square root of 100 is 10. You start with 10. In our case, number of independent variables are 8 or 9. Age, gender, balance, occupation, number of credit transaction, 5, 6, 7, 8. We have 8 independent variables. Square root of that, square root of 9 is 3. So approximately I am taking starting point as 3. That's a thumb rule. Node size equal to 10. It's a wrong parameter, no wrong value. This node size is the terminal node size. There is no pruning step. So this node size should be reasonably big. It should be at least one percentage of your data or at least some 100, 200, 500 observation, which is reasonably large data size. But here I am doing extreme overfitting. My objective is to show you random forest overcomes the overfitting problem by averaging. But if you do extreme overfitting, random forest will not be able to overcome that problem. And I'm going to show you by setting node size too small that if you do extreme overfitting, random forest is not going to tolerate no. it and it will be a overfit model. Okay. So let me set that as 10 only. In <coughs> Importance equal to true. I'm saying random forest algorithm as you run the algorithm, you also compute in the background which variable is important. Okay. So this is my function call. And here because I have not set the replace parameter. So default is replace equal to true, which means I'm going with a sampling with replacement algorithm part of the uh, random forest. You see this logic is going in cart model. It took it instantaneously build the model. But now when I ran the random forest, it took some time to build the model because there are 500 trees that got built. Can I now the question is in cart model, we use a fancy plot to show a visual output. Can I use fancy plot in random forest to get a tree output? No. Why no? Because in the background there are 500 trees. Now you say fancy plot of that. You will have 500 trees coming on your screen. And that 500 trees will give you a feel of a forest. And that's the name random forest. If you see random sampling, 
random variable selection number of trees if you try to plot them it will be like a forest you actually you cannot plot it okay because it's like a forest lake and you will not be able to see it will not be able to visualize this as a because it will have just imagine 500 cart trees are being plotted on one above the other you will not be able to interpret it yes so and again the 500 trees coming on it will give you a feel like a forest and that's the reason forest word in that technique random forest okay okay let us print the random forest we cannot plot it but we can get certain attributes of that so I'm just saying print when I say print it gives me this is the function call this says I'm using it for classification purpose how many trees I'm building 500 how many variables considered at each split node three three out of the eight variables are to be considered out of bag error estimate is 8.28 and this is my confusion matrix 64 cases wrongly uh, predicted here and 1095 cases wrongly predicted here and that would be 8.28 okay let us understand this out of bag error rate concept so far I built the model the model development is just one line only thing is I've still not optimized it okay but model is built now this out of bag error rate concept let us understand Here we saw that certain records will be selected and certain not. So now let's proceed with that. I have my customer IDs. This is sample 1, sample 2, sample 3, dot dot dot, sample 500. Agreed? We said how many samples? 500 samples. And these are my records, one, two, three. These are my customer IDs. Fourteen thousand. Certain records will be part of sample one. Certain records will not be part of sample one. Approximately 63 percentage of records will be part and remaining 36 will not be part of the sample one. Sample two similarly certain records will be part and second will not be part of that sample. More or less 63. Agreed? Similarly, I'll have a sample like this certain records will be part and certain records will not be part. Do you agree? And this can continue. This story will happen for all the 500 samples. <coughs> now on a sample one, when the cart model is built, the cart model will be built on all these Y's because that will be part of your modeling base agreed do you agree or not yeah and that model be called as m1 similarly on this the model will be built on all these y's and that will be model m2 Likewise, I'll have model M3 and model M500. For this model M1, can I say these records as out of bag? Because they are not part of the bag on which model is built. Can I say it is out of bag? For this model M2, can I say these ends 
are out of bag. Likewise, for each model, certain records are out of bag. Now let's just focus on a particular record. Let's focus on this particular record. In this particular record, this record is out of bag here. Let me give a different color. It is out of bag here and somewhere say here, here, certain places it is out of bags. Okay. Now this record where it is out of bag, can I predict the class of this record based on model M1? M1 is a model. A model can predict class of any record. Can I make a prediction? Can I make a prediction or not? I can make a prediction. For N, I'll predict based on model M1 where this record is out of back for M1. Okay. Assume this prediction is 1. Likewise, this record is out of bag for M3. Assume the prediction is 0. Similarly, it would be 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0. In all the samples, wherever it is out of bag, wherever a given record is out of bag, with respect to that model, I am predicting the class. So, can I now predict predicted class for this record? How will I get the predicted class? What I have to do is see how many times it is 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 6 times it is 1. How many times it is 0? 1, 2, 3, 4. Majority of models is predicting its class as 1. So predicted class is 1. Likewise, each record will be out of bag in some models and it will be in bag in some models. Wherever it is out of bag with respect to that model, its class will be predicted and then voting will be done and based upon the voting, you predict the class of that record. Assume this is what your classes are. Predicted classes. For each of the records, actual target class is known. Actual is known because that is your input based upon which the model is built. So actual is known. Can I now take these two columns, create a cross tab, create a confusion matrix? Can I do that? I can create this confusion matrix. Right? Once I have a confusion matrix, can I compute the error rate of this confusion matrix? I can compute because these are error cases. These are error cases. So here, how many error cases are there? 64 plus 1095 divided by 8.27 this number 8.28 are you getting yeah so once I have this predicted class and target can I create a confusion matrix I can after creating confusion matrix can I compute error rate I can now this predicted class was based on all records which were out of bag in their respective models. As such this error rate is not called classification error, it is termed as out of bag error. 
end of day it's a classification error only but because it is computed on samples which were out of bag that's why it is called out of bag error rate and can you now see this out of bag acts as a validation sample internally internally it's being used as a validation right on one side i built a model a model has to be tested on a unseen data it becomes a validation so here we have a out of bag error concept to see the quality of model okay so far so this explains the out of bag error rate concept okay uh, just uh, english of out of bag sample left out in a kth tree is classified using the kth tree assume j cases are misclassified proportion of time that j is not equal to true class averaged over all cases is the out of bag estimate of error rate whatever is this english is what i explained you by that thing in a excel yeah so let's move to this so i got my out of bag error rate now the question is we have still not addressed how many trees to have the concept of out of bag error rate is used to find out how many trees are required so let us plot how out of bag error rate decreases as you increase the number of trees okay if you build a one uh, random forest with only one tree there will be certain out of bag error rate if you build it with five trees out of bag error rate will go down has to go down because otherwise there is no point of having five trees if you build it 10 it will go down after a certain point it will stop going down so let's see that plot if i plot this graph let me put legends also and title so if we plot this graph you see this out of bag error rate is decreasing is decreasing 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 then it keeps decreasing and then at a certain point it is plateaued which means after this plateauing there is no point having any number of trees beyond this because it is not any it is not causing any reduction in error are you getting the point because it is not causing any reduction having uh, say 75 trees or having 200 trees the same as far as out of bag is concerned so we have to find this is optimal this is 75 this is or something whatever is that we have to see what, where the error rate stops and that is where we have to stop okay uh, if the graph is not clear what we can do is we can have the thing coming from a uh, basically your tabular output how do i get a tabular output i directly print the random forest error rate table the same graphical thing it's in a tabular format so here it says that with one tree this is my out of bag error rate with two tree this is my error rate with three tree this is my error rate so 12 12 11 11 10 it is going down <coughs> 9 8 8.6 it is still going down okay good 8.5 8.4 it is still going down yeah and then somewhere it is stopped 8.4 8.3 it is stopped so now based upon your judgment you may say i should stop at 50 trees or i should stop at 70 trees <coughs> you will not say i should stop at 100 trees or 500 trees definitely you will not say 500 trees <coughs> your judgment may say 70 someone else judgment may say 80 but still 70 and 80 is far less than 
500. <coughs> Why finding out how many minimum number of trees is good enough to build the model is important. Why is that important? From a deployment point, it is very important. Let's explain. From a deployment point, once you have built a model, assume you are using this technique to build a, a model, say, <coughs> credit card transactions which are fraudulent. <coughs> Just hypothetically, let's assume that we are using this technique to build a model to predict credit card transactions which are fraudulent. The moment a transaction happens, the model has to evaluate and classify it as fraudulent or not fraudulent. Now, if the model is having 500 trees in the background and because of the 500 trees, assume it takes say two seconds to process. It takes two seconds. Assume hypothetical scenario and the accuracy of the model with 500 trees is not significantly different than what you are getting based on 50 trees. So in that case, if you are deployed a model with 50 trees, instead of 200, two seconds, your work would have happened in 0.2 second. Because 50 trees would have calculated faster and said it's a fraudulent transaction or not. So from a deployment, when you're deploying a model at deployment level, calculating, if you have many trees, calculating will take more time. As such, finding optimal is important. Again, optimal, here's a trade-off. Because with 500 trees, obviously my error rate is in 8.2. 0.082 but with 50 or 75 I'm stopping at 0.083 there is a marginal still gap right so always whenever there is a trade-off that's where the optimal word has to be used and we have been doing a optimal so this is how we find out how many optimal number of trees are required yeah okay so the first point is clear now the next point we said importance equal to true when we executed this function we said importance equal to true which i said that i want to find out which variable is important because in this entire tree variables are randomly selected at each level i want to know which are the variables which are coming very important and if you say importance equal to false it will not compute Basically, that is required because if you do not want to increase your processing time, you will say importance equal to false. Because it is an added overhead for the algorithm. So let us see how is importance equal to true computed. Let me just show the output first. What happened? So this is my importance table. Again, slightly tricky. Again, lots of concepts in this, how to create this importance. Uh, let me create a small tree. There are two ways in which importance is computed. These are your terminal nodes. And based on the terminal nodes, the class of the uh, record is assigned, right? And probability is also based upon which terminal node a given record falls 
major who is which class is majority and accordingly the class is assigned now let us understand how this variable importance is computed a variable say x y z there is a variable and there are many such trees in the background assume there is a variable x y z which is at this level for all the records i i randomly assign values for this column for all the records i randomly assign values for this column x y z let us take the variable x y z as gender and it has got two classes say male and female right instead of going with the actual value of gender for each record i am hypothetically creating a new column gender and randomly assigning each record a male or a female so far is it okay with you if i hypothetically put male and female and then i try to classify the records what will happen is there are certain customers who are actually male and there are certain customers who are actually female but when i hypothetically assign the value for some of these customers who are actually male i can probably assign them as female and some of these females i may randomly assign them male the moment i assign a female candidate male what will happen the classification of that candidate will go on this side and if i assign a female candidate uh, for a male candidate a female the classification tree of this side will be followed and based upon the parameter the wrong a customer who was male may end up as here one of these because i assigned it randomly female similarly a customer who was female because i just assigned it male they may end up in these terminal nodes and because of this my classification accuracy or my classification error will it increase or decrease my classification error will it increase or decrease increase classification error will increase logically agreed clear so far this is the first point i want to make clear that i am now doing a experimentation where i for one of the column i am randomly ch ch changing the attribute values and then classifying those and then seeing what is the increase in classification error now let us consider another variable say salaried and self employed and that variable salaried and self employed is not at this level it is not at this level but that variable is at this level salaried and this is self employed i randomly for all records for this occupation category i randomly assign any values so some of the cases who are actually salaried may get tagged as self employed and some of the cases who are actually self employed may get tagged as self uh, salaried okay and now i try to predict the class in that case which all terminal nodes will be impacted these two terminal nodes will be impacted rest of the terminal nodes where occupation is not coming into play they will be fine so these terminal nodes these three terminal nodes will be fine so which means 
if I randomly change occupation, the impact on error, will it be higher as compared to gender variable? Or will it be lower as compared to gender? Lower. Why? Because occupation is impacting only a small subset. Are you getting the point? And gender is impacting a larger subset because it is way up in the hierarchy. So what is happening is, now what the way this accuracy, this entire calculation is done, randomly for each variable which is part of the model, randomly you set values for that variable and then see how much error is increasing. There will be certain variables when you randomly change their values, they will cause a high increase in error. And there will be certain variables when you randomly change their values, they will cause a small impact in error. What it means is the variable which has a high impact on error are more important because they will be high up in the hierarchy tree. That's why they will be having more impact and the variables which are having less impact, which will be most of the time they will be lower levels in the tree. And that is the philosophy which is used here. You randomly change one variable at a time. See what is the impact in increase of error. A variable which increases error more is more significant as compared to a variable which increases error less comparatively lower. And based upon that, this hierarchy is given. Make sense? Yeah? This is the one way of computing variables which are important. Now let us understand this was one this is one way on how uh, variable importance is computed. Now here you can see the mean decrease Gini. There is another way by which uh, the variable importance is computed. Again, let's see a sample tree. Variables are considered. Now, a given variable which comes here, is it causing a Gini drop? Is there a Gini gain happening here? Yeah? Similarly, there will be certain variables coming here. Again, there will be a Gini gain from this level to this level and so forth. In the background, there are many such trees. Can I say this Gini gain is because of a variable X, Y, Z, which is at this level? Similarly, can I compute the Gini gain which is occurring here because of variable A, B, C? And there are many trees which are created in the background. Certain variable will come in certain tree and certain variable will not be a part of certain tree. Can I aggregate the Gini gain of each variable across all the trees? A variable which has caused maximum Gini gain across all the tree is the best variable because a variable which gives you highest Gini gain comes on the top. So a variable which has got a highest Gini gain cumulative across all the trees, 50, 500, whatever number of trees we are building, a variable which has got highest Gini gain, can I say that variable is more likely to be most important? Because that is the reason why it is coming at top in the higher levels. So that is the that is the concept of computing Gini gain based uh, variable importance. So here when I have to compute, then I will have to see which variable gives me highest Gini gain. So based on this, balance will be important variable as against 
occupation based on accuracy error decrease accuracy uh, based on error uh, classification error concept occupation is more important and based on Gini gain balance is more important yeah so there are two ways it is giving you the calculations so let's come to the presentation slide this one is done so this is the variable importance slide we have seen and then this is the definitions random forest computes two measures of variable importance one is based upon mean decrease in accuracy and second is the mean decrease in Gini mean decrease in accuracy is based on permutation mean decrease in accuracy is based on permutation randomly permute values of a variable for which importance is to be computed in the OOB sample compute the error rate with permuted values compute the decrease in error rate permuted minus not permuted C compute the decrease okay average the decrease over all the trees and that is how error rate is done mean decrease in Gini is computed as total decrease in node impurities from splitting on the variable averaged over all the trees when you go from a higher level node to a lower level node there is a decrease in Gini so total decrease in node impurities from splitting on the variable wherever that variable is coming for splitting you see what is the decrease in Gini and then you average it across all the trees that is the mean decrease in Gini so these are the two ways based upon which it is giving you output for variable importance so based upon out of bag we know how many trees to be considered and uh, we we did not conclude how many trees to con uh, have so let me just conclude it uh, my error rate is 11 12 11 sorry sorry I have to scroll so 11 10 9 8 8 8 8 8 8 something 8.4 8.4 8.3 8 8.4 somewhere around 8.3 it is now sh like okay I can say 75 I just have to select 75 60 I have to select that is my optimal number of trees so there were two important elements number of variables to consider number of trees to have and as a byproduct I also know which variable is important by uh, variable importance thing so number of trees to have I have decided say I have decided 75 I have to now find optimal number of variables okay to find optimal number of variables there is a function called tune RF which is tuning the random forest so let me call this function before I call this function this is the function tune RF let me explain each and every parameter that we pass so tune RF takes multiple parameters X is basically all the independent variables Y is your target variable M try start I don't know what is the optimal M so I am saying start with 3 how do I decide the starting point square root of the number of independent variables in our case it is 8 so we are starting with 3 N tree based upon our previous step we came to know 75 80 100 so I am saying 100 so I have taken number of optimal trees as 100 step factor 1.5 what is the step factor the tune RF function in the background is going to call random forest function initially it will call the random forest function saying number of trees to be built is 100 number of variables to be considered is 
three. It builds a random forest model and it computes the out of bag error rate. Then it is going to do three into 1.5. Three into 1.5 is 4.5. I cannot have 4.5 variable. I can have four variable or six. So it's going to consider four. Sorry, 4.5 will be four variable or five. So it is going to say four. So again, it is going to run random forest with four variables. Again, it is going to build a random forest model and compute out of bag error rate. It is going to compare this out of bag error rate with four variables with respect to the three variables. If the out of bag error reduces, if the out of bag error reduces, which means selecting four variables M as four is better off than selecting M as three. Logical. So it finds okay, that is better off. Then it is going to say four into step factor, which is 1.5. Four into 1.5. That will be six. And now going to again build a model using six variables. Again, it is going to compute out of bag error rate. Can I compare the out of bag error rate of six variables with respect to four? If the run error rate of six is less than four, which means optimal is around six, not around four. Then it will again do a step factor six into 1.5, nine. So this process continues so long as your error rate keeps going down. After a stage, as M keeps increasing, after a stage you will see error rate will increase. Why will error rate increase after a stage? After a certain point, as you keep increasing the value of M, after a certain point, the error is going to increase. It will not keep going down as you keep adding variables. We saw that too high a M means correlated models. The strength of individual model keeps going up, but all models are now becoming correlated, which means averaging is not canceling out. As such, after a certain stage, because correlation will start kicking into the models, the model will become or out of the predictions of the model will start going down. Though each individual tree will be good, but they because of the correlation, the averaging element will not play. Yeah. Now we started three into 1.5. Likewise, should it not go down also? Assume this M try is not three, it is 10. Should it not go down also? So it will say M try divided by 1.5. Okay, so 3 divided by 1.5, 2, right? So it will try building a model with 2. If it would have been 10, then 10 divided by 1.5. So it would have been around 6 or 7. Assume 7, 1.5 into 6 is 9 and so assume 7. Then it would be 7 divided by 1.5 it will be around three and again if it on the lower side it sees out of bag error rate is going down then which means optimal is on the lower side but after a stage as you keep decreasing m after a point what will happen too low a m model will be each model will be weak weak so again there will be a problem so this tuning, what it does is it keep playing with the number of M and it tries to find the optimal M by seeing the out of bag error rate. Now, how many levels, how many, how many times to keep continuing with the tune? As I keep going up, should I keep continuing? That is decided based upon a improvement factor. If in my previous iteration, I got out of bag error rate as 8.4 and in the next iteration I get a out of bag error rate as 8.39 
there is an improvement of 0.01 percentage. Is this improvement of 0.01 percentage good enough for me to improve further? That is compared with the improvement factor. So long as your improvement factor, this is in proportion terms. This is in proportion terms. Okay. So long as your improvement is more than this threshold that you have set. I've set a very small threshold. It should be slightly higher. Okay. So, so long as your improvement is better off than this, you keep changing, keep going ahead. Trace equal to true. What is trace equal to true? It says that as you keep doing iteration, you show me output of each iteration. Plot equal to true. What it is saying is, as you do iteration, keep making a plot also. So I get a visual, just not a verbose output. I also get a visual output. Do best equal to true. What is do best equal to true? After you have done lots of iteration with 3, 4, 6, 8, 10 variables, you have found out what is best. Take that best. You yourself build a model for me. And that you select the best. You build the model and that best model will be stored in this object. Node size equal to 10 it is basically the node size parameter min bucket. Importance equal to true. When you have found the which is the best combination, use that best combination and then find out variable importance. So these are the parameters. And when you run this, you will get this kind of a output. Okay, so let me let me do that. Let me run this code. So here you can see that M try equal to three. I got 8.81. It's 8.82. So it says that on this side my error is higher. So there's no point. But on the other side, 8.7 error is reduced. 8.66 error is further reduced. So it is saying this iteration it is saying that 8 is the best. Okay, so you should consider 8. Again, this output is slightly impacted by the node size. If you keep this node size too small, it will impact. Okay, and second important thing is you may find that see here in our case number of variables are few. When you are doing a practical scenario, you will have say 100, 200 variables. Now when you're running it with 200 variables and when you're doing a tuning step, in one tuning step it will say 20 is the optimal number of variables. When you run it again, in next tuning step it may say 24 is the optimal number of variables. When you run it again, it may say 16 is the optimal number of variables. When you again run, it will say 20 is the optimal. Again run 16, 20, 16, 20, 24, 16, 18, 20, 24. You may get this optimal. Assume you get each run, you get a different output. And then you will say, hey, is 16 optimal or is 18 optimal? Is 24 optimal? Please understand optimal is a range. If you recollect, here, reducing M reduces both the correlation and the strength. Increasing it increases both. Somewhere in between is an optimal range. Optimal is not a one point value. It's a range of M. As such, don't be, uh, don't feel that I'm getting a different output in each iteration what will happen is that value will be in certain range. Any value you take is optimal in that case. Okay. So we have seen this step. So here when you run it in this case it has done with optimal with 10 again let me ch change the node size to 10 because I'm going to I said I'll show you what is uh, overfitting. Let me run it again. 
probably this time we will get a different output. So here out of bag 8.35, 8.33 on 2 it is now it is reduced on so you see from 3 it went down to 2 and then went down to 1 also. Why? Because improvement factor was more than our threshold of 0 0.001. So because it was more than that it has improved it. Okay, then 8.6 then it went right. On right hand side error increased 8.45. As such it did not go to next level. It did not go to 8. Yeah. <coughs> Uh, so it would have considered 8.35, 8.33 this as optimal and it would have built the model using this. So based upon that whatever is the optimal, that optimal model is stored here. Okay, again we can see the TRF. Now why are these parameters provided you importance equal to true, do best equal to true, plot equal to true, trace equal to true because all these parameters, why is why are these parameters provided to you? The reason why these parameters are provided, once you have this model and once you have set this entire structure of which all variables to pass for model development you have parameterized it what you can do you can set this as an automated process on your server by an automated process what will happen is as you get new set of data you want your model to get refreshed automatically so you can have a automation done. You can have proper set of automation and coding done such that end of each month when you have the previous history and the new target and you want to make a model with the updated set of data points. You can refresh the model automatically and when you are automatically updating the model in a server, is there anyone going to sit there to see this graph? No. If there is no one going to be sitting there to see this graph, can you make this false? You can, but uh, if... Uh, see, when there, is, when, the, when there are things happening on a server in automated mode and there is no one who is sitting there to see the graph, there is no one seeing. Because see, creating a graph takes a split second, but it takes some time. Yeah. It's a waste of time. Uh, yes. Do you want this trace also? Because there is no one sitting there to see the output of trace. Yeah. You don't want. Because you once you have already got a knowledge of which variables are important, do you each time you are running, do you want that knowledge? So what I want to understand here uh, is, is that uh, uh, when there is new data that is being added to the Excel sheet, See when you get a new set of data, let us take a, let us take a, I got it, let us take a example and fantastic example is the demonetization case. Assume I had a model where your behavior, assume I am trying to build a model for selling certain products, say investment product as a bank and some variables were in that investment product is how many transactions you do how many ATM withdrawals you do those are variables number of transaction and number of ATM withdrawals now with demonetization will your ATM withdrawal behavior change yes. it would have gone down and number of transactions would have gone up my model which was built based on earlier parameters they would have they would have an input which would be a certain number of transactions average number of transaction per salaried guy would be seven eight in a month and average number of ATM withdrawals would be four in a month but all of a sudden 
the number of transactions would have gone, become 12, 14, and number of ATM transactions would have gone down from 4 to 3. In a normal scenario, what would have happened is as new data comes, with this, because each month when you are selling, you have the new target also being generated. I can take a new set of data and rebuild a model. In without automation, my process would be manually take the data, put it on my machine, build a model with automation, and that's where job losses are happening. With automation, what is happening is it becomes an ETL process extract transform load and in server automatically the process of creating the data set merging the target and then running this tune rf function and now when you run this tune rf with a new set of data points automatically the number of transaction will get a slightly different weightage as compared to the previous month and number of ATM transactions will automatically get slightly different weightage as compared to the previous model. So in a changing scenario, when there is a business environment which is continuously changing, you want a, a setup where your models can be recalibrated very fast. When models have to be recalibrated very fast, you cannot have a setup where someone is going to pull data from server put it in his desktop, run the code, build the model, and again put it back in the server as deployment. You want a setup by which this entire process happens automatically. This function is giving you, you pass all the variables, you pass the necessary parameter settings. The model will get recalibrated automatically with tuning steps. Optimal will automatically find. So, because of the tune RF, everything will happen. So in the background, what I have to write is some code which will automatically run on every every month on particular day. And a new model will be recalibrated. And when all of these things are happening, I don't want trace, I don't want plot, I don't want importance. So I can set these parameters. That's the reason why parameters are given. This is one of the reasons why whenever functions are created, these things are made parameterized. Getting the point? It will take the new content. It will replace the old content. Because if you add to the old content. No. It will replace the content. See, logically, if the behavior, the reason why you want new data and new content to consider because why you don't want incremental data to be added if you have incremental data where huge amount of historical behavior then you will see one year back data is also given same weightage as the recent data then you will say one year back the the electronic digital behavior was very minuscule compared to what is today as such the idea philosophy will be to take as latest data as possible and replace the old data are you getting the point? What you are referring is on an MPD basis, for an example. However, if we want to use the same... So, here the tune RF would have built my model. So, we saw the tuning step and we have seen this output. Uh, automatic, this is like a plot. Here, this plot shows that 4 is optimal. We, our, In our case, our data set is too small. And as such, you will get sometimes 4, sometimes 6, sometimes 3. Don't bother about it. Optimal is always a range. Yeah. Once you have got the tuning done, the tune RF is your final model. Once the tuning is done, the tune RF is the final model. What are the next steps? On the development set, first you have to do predict the class. You have to predict the probability. So you predict the class and probability. Once you have done predict of the class and probability, what is the next step? Create the rank ordering table. The model performance measures kicks in. 
after you have done the rank ordering table <coughs> the other way way of creating getting the KS statistics ROCR area under curve Gini coefficient your confusion matrix okay so let us run all of those codes one by one so this is the data set this is the data set on which I build the model development sample TRF is where my model is there tuned model TRF I use this here I'm saying type equal to class which means I'm computing the class and then I'm saying type equal to prob I'm computing the probability so let us see this sample six records so here you can see that class is predicted then I got predict dot score zero and predict dot score one so probability for one and probability for zeros are computed okay <coughs> and just uh, from a technical standpoint if you do a class of this you will see it is a matrix it says matrix and the output is based upon votes okay so once you have got the probabilities we have to compile our decile function so let us select this decile function this is our decile function control R the entire decile function is compiled I use the probability for one okay and compute the decile let me so decile let us again just quickly view the development data so here you have seen the decile column now coming up okay next step rank ordering so I require data table this entire code depends upon data table so I'll run the rank ordering steps case response rate cumulative responders and view of the rank order this is your rank ordering table in cart model in cart model we did not get 10 deciles if you recollect in cart model we got only three deciles same data was used now we have built a model using random forest and we are now getting 10 deciles why In cart model, we had only one cart tree in the background. In random forest, we have said 100 trees. After doing that uh, uh, out of bag error rate plot, we found out 100 is where we said it's optimal. 100 trees are created. All those 100 trees are not same cart because in a one cart, certain set of variables would have been considered randomly. In one cart tree in the background, variable holding period would have come at top. In second model, variable balance would have come on top. In a third model, occupation would have come on top. In fourth, age would have come on top. As such, the terminal nodes, a given record, will keep falling in different terminal nodes, which will have different probabilities. Now you have 100 different probabilities for a given record, and then you are averaging those 100 probabilities. That probability may not be exactly same with respect to another record and in cart what happened 66 percentage of the record where only one tree was created 66 percentage of the base was sitting in one terminal node right so this random forest because of multitude of trees happening the probability granularity is also now increased the scale of the probabilities assigned has become much more better and that's the reason you are ending up with 10 deciles do you agree yeah so here what is the case of this model 0.9 fantastic model it's not a fantastic model why because what we said case statistics of a good model would be around 45 48 45. yeah and if it goes above 50 it is a cause of concern it is an indicator that the model is overfitting which means this model is overfitting 
yeah so here the model is overfitting let me show you but this is our model this is 8.8 .8 is our baseline reference uh, response rate in the top decile it is giving 81 percent response rate 10 times by top two deciles cumulative responders 100 percentage of the responders are captured which means if I just target the top two decile all potential responders I'm going to get I'm not going to lose anyone right extreme overfitting and this we can now quickly see uh, yes I'll just so let me just run other statistics also using uh, ROCR package also I can compute the KS uh, this is my KS step let us see what is the KS coming based upon ROCR package 95 and virtually it's the same thing that we got based upon this 90 okay and then let us see AUC AUC also statistics will be in 90s so let us see what is AUC coming 99 <laughs> okay uh, I hope you people have seen the video of AUC inequality inequality again will be in 90s Gini 0.722 very high and classification error what is the how many cases are wrongly classified 897 and 4 so it is basically how many cases 897 plus 4 is 90 901 out of 14,000 are 6.4 cases percentage cases are wrongly classified all these statistics are for the development sample a model is good which will have similar kind of output when you actually deploy in real life right but let us see on a sample which is a holdout sample which was created from the same population whether this model is working on the similar data set where the origin original population is same let us firstly ignore future firstly where the population is same in that same population is it holding so let us now move to the holdout sample I have my holdout data on holdout data I am using TRF model that is our tuned model on this I will compute the class I will compute the probability I am now computing the deciles and then I am computing the holdout rank ordering no there is some problem with this it's not refreshed somewhere some calculation is gone wrong this is the holdout base this is the holdout probability this is the holdout score temp dt oh temp dt I missed this step this should be holdout I again use the same uh, dev sample okay let me save also <coughs> whatever okay this is your rank ordering for holdout it shows you 32 percent response rate in your top decile it shows you 81 percentage response rate in your top decile it shows you by second decile 100 percentage of responders are captured it shows you in whole rank ordering even after 10 decile only at 10 decile 100 percentage are captured right which means this model when it is applied on a holdout it's not working fine there is a overfitting what can you do to avoid this overfitting we have got only these many variables now what can we do the first thing that we can do the first thing we can do is 
increase uh, where is our tune RF increase the node size this node size has to be increased because we are doing extreme overfitting so <coughs> let me increase it to say 150 okay when I increase it before I run this model again I have to re-import the data why I have to re-import because I am saying except the first two columns all columns have to be considered in the same data we have computed predicted class predicted score predict and deciles all those columns will again become a input variables they will also become the predictor variables now to avoid all those confusion we have to re-import the data okay sometimes whenever you are doing practical thing and you you forget because you are working on the same development and then you are predicting and then what will happen the predicted column will become a independent variable so those things you have to take care okay I have re-imported both the data sets now I'll I'll do the tuning despite doing the tuning the overfitting is not going to go completely but still it will reduce to a certain extent now can you see the outputs are not shown why because last time what we did everything I made it false okay no I don't want it because anyways do best true is there do best so my model is done so I'll use that model created the deciles function is already compiled so I don't have to compile it again okay decile is created library I don't have to re-import this is the rank ordering now as you increase the node size the number of the granularity has gone down so number of deciles have reduced okay <coughs> let us see how this model is now performing at least from 81 this response rate has come down to 45 which looks fine right now we have to see it on the holdout sample so I'll now use the model on the holdout data I am using the same model to score it which we just tuned and now I run the holdout rank ordering steps this is 28 and this is 45 still there is a gap there is still a gap despite you keep increasing the number of variables in our case this problem is not going to get solved because of our data being highly skewed in favor of the class 0 okay fundamentally what is the model in the background cart if you recollect in cart what we said if the data is biased if the data is biased after it uh, the classification error is not going to go down similarly random forest is a cart model in the background and out of bag error rate is what out of bag error rate is nothing but a classification error so the limitation of cart which is cart model does not perform great when you have a biased data set that limitation applies on random forest also how do you overcome this limitation how will you overcome this limitation that there is a biased data set how do you overcome that problem In our cut, we discussed that you have to do oversampling, stratified oversampling of the minority class. So similarly, in random forest, you have to do a stratified oversampling of the minority class. In that, what it means is the number of ones you have to increase. When you increase the number of ones, and then build a model 
and then use that model on the holdout sample, you will see the rank ordering table coming more or less same. Only thing now you cannot do a direct comparison of the response rate. Why? Because in the development sample when you do oversampling, the baseline response rate will be increased. But in the holdout we are not increasing the baseline. We are using the model and just checking how good the model is rank ordering. So when the baseline of development is higher than the baseline of holdout, what will be the right way of looking at data, uh, the rank ordering? The lifts. Because lift cancels out the baseline effect. So you have to see the lift at each decile. <coughs> so again, this I leave as a homework where you have to build a random forest by doing a stratified oversampling of the response class and then you have to compare your model cart model one single standalone cart model with a tuned random forest model compare this you will see when you do oversampling, after doing oversampling, the random forest model will be better off than a standalone cart model. That is your homework. <coughs> and that will also help you do practice. So, so we have seen uh, overfitting and we have seen that if you intentionally do extreme overfitting random forest is also not a good technique. To some extent if you give right set of parameters, right node size and all those things it will overcome the problem of overfitting. Okay. Finally, the model technique is done. Let me, before I complete this slide, let me quickly summarize all that we have done. Our learning objectives were, what is ensemble modeling? Bagging, a random forest algorithm, out of bag error rate, optimal finding optimal number of trees, finding optimal number of variables to select. We have covered all of them. Ensemble modeling, multitude of learning algorithms, you build multiple models and then take aggregate based upon all of that voting or averaging and you take a bootstrap aggregation, there is a sampling with replacement and multiple samples that is bootstrap and then you aggregate the output of all of them that is aggregation and that's why bootstrap aggregation is abbreviated as bagging and random forest is a bootstrap aggregation technique, it is also a standalone ensemble modeling technique. It involves creating multiple samples, then the algorithm is same as a cart algorithm, only thing is variables at each level is randomly selected and then you have multiple trees based on n samples, n trees are built, each record is classified based on the n tree, final class is be decided based upon voting. Okay. This is all the codes, out of bag error is based on samples which were out of bag in a given sample which is scored by the respective model okay that's how out of bag error rates are computed and out of bag error rate is used to find out optimal number of trees to be built variable importance there are two ways of identifying variable importance one is based upon mean decrease in Gini and second is mean decrease in accuracy <clears throat> finding optimal number of trees basically you have got the tune RF function by which you can find out optimal number of trees. Finally, once you have found out the tuned model, the same model performance measures rank ordering, lift chart, KS, Gini, AUC, classification error, all sets of those things comes into play. 
and obviously once you have built a model you have tested it on a development you have to test it on the holdout and when you see the performance measures on the holdout if the performance measures deviate by more than 10 percentage you should not take that model forward you should try to rectify that model yeah finally why i like the random forest technique <coughs> typically in practical scenarios you will have 300 to 500 variables with technique like logistic regression we learned logistic regression logistic regression has one important challenge which is it cannot handle multicollinearity if there are two or more correlated variables what will you do you have to drop the correlated and keep one of the variables now just let us consider a simple scenario banking scenario you have customers transacting to different channels some customers transact to mobile channel mobile banking some customers transact to net banking channel some customers transact through ATM channel some customers transact through ECS RTGS right all of these channels when a customer transact if I have a variable total number of transactions and then I have a variable total number of net transaction then I have a variable total number of ATM transaction and then I have a variable total number of mobile banking transactions. Will these variables more or less be correlated with each other? They will. When you use a logistic regression technique which cannot handle multicollinearity, what are you going to do? You will find correlated variables, you will see variance inflation factor and drop all the correlated, keep only one of them. But do you agree that a customer who does net banking more compared to other channels that customer has got a slightly different flavor compared to a customer who does mobile banking transaction more do you agree a customer who does more of net banking there is one customer who do more all transaction electronic but through net banking there is another customer who do all electronic but through mobile banking they have got good volume of transactions all other parameters remaining same AQB number of total transaction all other remaining same but is there a slight different flavor in customer who does mobile banking vis-a-vis -vis who does only through net banking what will happen is this slightly different flavor in a logistic regression kind of technique will be lost why because these will come as correlated variables and because of correlated variables you will have to drop them which means you will have been forced to keep only one variable in random forest what will happen when you run the algorithm at each level it randomly selects the variables so what will happen the first tree is being built there is number of transaction total number of transaction total number of net transaction total number of mobile transaction total number of ATM transaction and so forth because randomly variables are selected many of the variables may not get selected and say total number of transaction is selected and that variable becomes part of that tree then there is a second tree which is built in a second tree it is quite possible total number of transaction is not part of the model ATM is part of the model there is a third tree ATM and total number is not there but net is there there is a fourth tree which mobile is there which means each tree which is getting now built is capturing slightly slightly different flavor which is part of the correlated variables finally the score is computed and then you are averaging which means you are taking all the flavors now and based upon that you are build, predicting and because of that the random forest technique when you compare with a standalone cart model or when you compare with a standalone logistic regression model random forest model performance will be better than these two standalone models because it has got an inherent capability to get these slight slight different flavor of correlated variable again in case of cart model because there is only one tree 
one of these five variables which is significant will come rest of all of them because they're marginally less information marginally less Gini gain because of that they may drop out Logistic is not part of random forest. Logist, random forest is able to take different variables in different trees because it is giving opportunity to each variable. It is giving opportunity to each correlated variables to come in one of the many trees. And because it is giving opportunity for those variables to come, it is able to get the small difference in the flavor of those variables in the tree also okay so that is the benefit and many a times again again what we find is when you run uh, these models with the uh, business users if you go with the logistic regression where you have a limitation of not taking all correlated variables there are five variables and you go to your boss boss has got a clear thing no mobile banking is the variable which should come and he will say get number of mobile transactions only and then you will explain to your boss sir I have done tolerance I have computed variance inflation factor based upon variance inflation factor mobile banking variable should be dropped as against net banking because there is a statistical reasoning he will not understand all of them and he will say no then what will happen you have to take his what he is saying because boss is always right but in random forest what you can go and you can say to your boss sir let me explain you in the background there are 500 trees which are getting created the variable that you are saying is part of my model the variable that I have thought is also part of that model it's and win -win. it's a win-win and then you can also show sir there are 500 trees happening in the background and based upon relative variable importance because you get a variable importance also this is where this variable is stacking done so from that point this is a slightly but though output is a black box because you cannot get a tree output now that is a limitation but power wise better than a standalone cart model standalone logistic model Ensemble techniques like RF help you build model by considering multitude of predictor variable permutations. That is the key point. Challenge is you do not get an equation. Challenge is you do not get a visual output. It's a black box. Because it is a black box, when it comes to modeling in certain industries like banking where risk modeling is considered, and specifically when risk model is considered what happens is when you and specifically in case uh, in advanced countries like US if you reject a loan application customer has got right to ask the bank or the financial institution why you rejected my loan application and it is mandatory for that institution to respond back saying because of this parameter because of this factor we rejected when you run a random forest kind of a model for that because it's a black box it will not be able to tell you this customer was rejected because of which variable as such in risk random forest kind of techniques black box kind of techniques are still not used logistic regression is still the most used technique in the banking industry for risk modeling but once again, that is not be. anything which is black box is still not acceptable in many of the banking uh, many many of the banks because they are black box and for risk modeling specifically they don't accept it only white box techniques are used for risk modeling when it comes to marketing everyone is using more of black box nowadays yes yes Yes, so for that reason, when it comes to white box and when it comes to marketing, random forest is a better technique compared to standalone cart and st or standalone logistic regression technique. When it comes to uh, risk side, I would still go with a logistic regression technique. With that, we complete the random forest technique. Any questions?
or we can conclude the session okay so there are no questions thank you